Mga kababayan, muli isang magandang umaga sa ating lahat sa ating mga manonood matagal din tayo hindi nakapagpalabas ng video at ito nga may bagong ruling na ipinalabas uh, galing sa ibang bansa patangkol dito sa Saba pabor dito sa Sultanate of Sulu pero bago ang lahat baka naman pakipindot na yung like and subscribe na yan salamat Kung meron pong malinaw doon sa desisyon ng arbitral court sa kaso ng Saba, ito po yun. Una, hindi raw kailanman binenta ng Sultan ng Sulu ang Saba. Pangalawa, pinaarkila lamang niya ito sa mga banyaga noong 1878. At pangatlo, pag-aari pa rin ito ng kanyang pamilya hanggang ngayon. At pang-apat, may utang daw ang Malaysia sa pamilya ng Sultan na $14.9 billion na renta. Yan po ang buo ng desisyon ng Spanish Arbiter na si Gonzalo Stampa nitong Pebrero 2022. Balikan lamang po natin ang uh, pinagbulan ng lahat, ang kontratang pinirmahan ng Sultan of Sulu noong 1878 at ng British North Borneo Company, isa pong pribadong kumpanya, para sa paggamit ng likas ng yaman ng Saba. Pag-aari kasi ng Sultan of Sulu ang Saba mula pa noong 1658. Pero sa kontrata noong Noong 1878, pinaubaya ng Sultan ang Saba sa British North Borneo Company kapalit ang halagang 5,000 Mexican dollars taon-taon. Ngayon, nung World War II, sinakop ng mga Hapon ang Saba. Pero matapos ang gera, binalik ito ng mga Hapon, hindi sa Pilipinas kundi sa British government. Kalaunay binigyan ng Britain ng kalayaan ng Saba at sumama ito sa bagong tatag na federasyon ng Malaysia. Ito ay sa kabila ng protesta ng Pilipinas na pag-aari ito ng isang Pilipino ang Sultan of Sulu. Itong naging kontrobersya ng higit pitong dekada ayon sa Pilipinas. Sakop ng Pilipinas ang Saba dahil pag-aari ito ng Sultan ng Sulu. Pero ayon naman sa Malaysia, binenta ng Sultan ng Saba sa British North Borneo Company noon ngang 1878. At ang Malaysia daw ngayon ang successor owner ng Saba. Ano paman, pinagpatuloy ng Malaysia ang pagbayad ng pera taon-taon sa pamilya ng Sultan ng Sulu. 5,300 ringgit kada taon ito o katumbas ng more or less 70,000 pesos kada taon. Ang tawag ng Malaysia sa bayad na ito ay session payment o bayad para sa pagbenta ng lupa. Pero ang tawag naman dito ng Sultan ng Sulu ay renta. Tumigil lamang ang bayad na ito noong 2013. Nagalit kasi ang Malaysia sa pagsugod ng mga supporters ng Sultan sa lahat dato sa Saba para ang kininulit ang Saba. Dahil po sa pagtigil ng bayad, umalma ang pamilya ng Sultan at naghabla sa isang arbiter sa Espanya noong taong 2018. Ang inappoint na arbiter ng Spanish Superior Court ay si Judge Gonzalo Stampa. Bakit po sa Espanya naghabla ang pamilya? Dahil noong 1851, pumirma ng tratado ang Sultan at ang Espanya na nagbibigay ng kontrol sa Espanya ng kabuuan ng Sultanate of Sulu. Ngayon, mulat sa pool, ayaw bigyang importansya ng Malaysia ang habla ng pamilya ng Sultan. Bilang kompromiso, nag-alok ang Malaysia na ibalik ang annual payments na may bonus pa na 10%. Kulang-kulang po, 608,000 pesos ang alok ng Malaysia na compromise deal sa Sultan. Binasura ito ng pamilya ng Sultan at pinagpatuloy ang paghahabla. Pero sa huli, ayon kay Judge Stampa, ang issue po ay umiikot lamang sa iisang bagay. Ang kontrata ba noong 1878 ay kontrata ng pagbenta o kontrata ng pag-arkila? At sa kanyang ruling, sinabi ni Stampa ng 1878 contract ay isa lamang private lease agreement sa pagitan po ng isang local ruler at isang private investor. Ayon kay Stampa, ang pagbenta ng sovereign territory sa isang pribadong individual ay hindi raw sakop ng international law. Isa raw itong kontrata lamang at hindi isang tratado sa pagitan ng dalawang estado. Dagdag pa ni Stampa, sa original na kontrata na nasa wikang Jawi or Old Malay, ginamit ang katagang pajakan o rental. Pero sa English translation nito, ginawa na itong grant or seeding of territory. Kaya't sa huli, kinatigan ni Stampa ang petisyon ng Sultanate ng Sulu na ibasura na ang 1878 agreement. Sa makatwid po, dapat nang ibalik ang kontrol ng Saba sa pamilya ng Sultan ng Sulu. Bukod sa danyos na $14.9 billion, ito po ang mas malaking implikasyon ng ruling ni Stampa. Sa pagbasura kasi ng 1878 contract, 
parang binalik na rin ang Saba sa kontrol at jurisdiksyon ng Pilipinas. Parang, yun lang, hindi po ito ganun kasimple. Mula pa noong 1963, ang Saba po ay bahagi na ng Malaysia. Sa loob ng halos anim na dekada, isa po ito sa labintatlong estado ng Malaysia. May laking 74,000 square kilometers, malaki ang kontribusyon nito sa ekonomiya ng Malaysia. Araw-araw, naglalabas ito ng 180,000 barrels ng langis, kaya't hindi ito basta-basta bibitawa ng Malaysia. Dagdag pa riyan, ang populasyon ngayon ng Saba, nasa 4 na milyon na. Sa madaling salta, sa bawat 8 Malaysians, isa po ay nakatira dito sa Saba. At sa nakarang 50 na taon, Malaysians ang turing nila sa kanilang mga sarili. It's merely a property claim of the Sultanate of Sulu. Roque believes the Philippines now has a stronger claim for sovereignty over Saba with the arbitral decision favoring Sultan Jamalun Kiram's descendants. Meanwhile, other Sultanates of Sulu are appealing for reconsideration over the arbitral ruling. They say it must not be limited just to the heirs of Kiram. Sultan and Dr. Ibrahim Bajin Shakirula, the second, uh, told One News, the chiefs, that the ruling should also include the sultanates of Shakirula and Alimuddin. To share more of his insights on the matter, we have with us on the show international law expert attorney Harry Roque is joining us live via Zoom. Attorney Roque, welcome to the big story. Yes, good evening, Robbie. Good evening, Brad Chair. And good evening, Philippines. Hey, Attorney Roque, before we get to the question of sovereignty, maybe as a, a lawyer you could explain to us first the nature of this case. Is this essentially a private case? Well, as it is, because it is uh, an arbitral decision filed by the uh, descendants of the Sultanate of Sulu and pursuant to an arbitration clause, it is a private case. Mm -hmm. The problem, though, is that the Sultanate of Sulu had already assigned all the rights over Saba to the Philippine government. And that is why the Saba issue has become a Philippine issue and not just a private matter for the Sultanate of Sulu. Don't get me wrong. I think the uh, Sultanate of Sulu should be satisfied, should be paid their proprietary rights. They leased the land. The, these payments were um, withheld in 2013, and they should be compensated for all the property rights that uh, the Malaysians benefited from Sabah. No? But at the same time, do not forget that this is a sovereignty issue because precisely of the uh, assignment made during the time of President Makapagad, no? where the uh, Sultanate in very clear words, assign all the rights to Saba to the Philippine government. Okay. I said the president should clarify now whether or not we will merely allow the Sultanate of Sulu to have their proprietary rights satisfied, in which case we should support the arbitration, or whether or not we should set aside the issue of proprietary rights and say that this is without prejudice to the issue of sovereignty. But in any case, the decision bolsters the claim of the Philippines precisely because the arbitral ruling said that because there is a breach on the part of Malaysia and its predecessor in interest to continue paying the rent, then the uh, contract had ceased to have legal validity and the parties must be restored to the status quo ante, meaning it must be transferred back to the Sultanate of Sulu, it must be transferred back to the Philippines. Uh, Malaysia has already said that they won't budge over this arbitral decision. How much teeth does this actually have? And um, who will be enforcing uh, the decision? Well, comparing this with the uh, West Philippine Sea uh, arbitration, no? the um, advantage of this claim being a private claim is that they can rely on what is known as the near Convention whereby all signatory countries to that convention agree to enforce arbitral decisions as if they are final and executory decisions of their domestic courts. There's a temporary setback because the French court said it cannot be enforced in France, but, of course, that does not apply to all the 162 countries mm -hmm. which are signatories to the New York Convention. Mm. Could you explain, that again, just a, a basic thing, because we, everybody's been trying to wrap their heads ar around this when the first news broke that a bailiff in Luxembourg had served an order for this and it was phrased uh, in, in, uh, uh, in, in news as basically serving uh, a seizure order 
I, what is it essentially, how do we get a grasp of what actually happened in, in, uh, in Luxembourg? What does it actually illustrate by way of enforcement? Well, in 1878, when uh, the Sultanate of Sulu entered into a contract of Pajak with Overben and Den, the uh, legitimate representatives of the uh, British government in Malaysia then, they entered into a contract of lease where in exchange of the transfer of sovereignty and possession over Saba, they would be paid 500 Mexican uh, dollars no, per year. They defaulted on that obligation, and because of the default, mm -hmm. the, uh, well, say, well, the well. heirs now invoke the arbitration clause, which basically is asking or asks the arbitration tribunal to rule that, number one, Malaysia is in default, and as a consequence, they should not just be made to pay for the rent, but they should be made to pay for all the foregone income that the Sultanate of Sulu um, did not receive as a result of their breach. And that is why the amount reached 15 billion, because in modern international law, um, compensation for property taken by foreign governments will include not only the physical value of the assets, but the foregone income as well, which is referred to in international law as lucrum cessans. And that is why the amount is 15 billion. No? It's not just the rental payments that were unpaid, but all the income that Malaysia deprived the Sultanate of Sulu as a result of the failure to pay the rental payments. Uh, Attorney Harry, one last question. It's, it's messy enough uh, uh, trying to uh, anticipate what the implication might be if it is raised as a matter of sovereignty between Malaysia and the Philippines, for that matter, geopolitical uh, considerations across, uh, across uh, ASEAN. Uh, it's messy enough without considering the mess at ground level, particularly with families, the different sultanates. Now other sultanates are, and other descendants of sultanates are claiming that, Uy, kami rin, not just the kirams. How complicated and how much of a spanner does that throw in this entire case? Well, it's not complicated at all. The uh, title of the Philippines is derived from the assignment made by the Sultanate of Sulu, and the title in turn of uh, the Sultanate of Sulu is pursuant to a 1700 treaty of session whereby the uh, Sultanate of Brunei ceded to the Sultanate of, of, mm -hmm. of Sulu half of what we know today as Saba. Take note that the other half continues to remain under the ownership of the Sultanate of Brunei, but the heirs of the Sultanate of Brunei have not been enforcing, enforcing their claim, unlike the Sultanate of Sulu. Now, as to who are the uh, descendants of the Sultanate of Sulu, you see the, um, the, the parties in the um, arbitration relied on what is known as the Makaski decision, mm. which is a decision of a UK um, co English court in Malaysia, where after the last male heir of the Sultanate of Sulu died, the um, heirs went to court to adjudicate who amongst themselves should be recognized as descendants of the um, Sultanate of Sulu. No? So these are now the eight descendants that are parties to the case. And their standing is because they have a valid English court decision recognizing them as the lawful descendants of the Sultanate of Sulu. There's nothing complicated about it. Although I have to admit, this will cause nightmares for diplomats, but I think inevitably there will be a diplomatic solution. Anong masasabi mo kabayan? Don't forget to comment down below at yayag ang iyong saloobin kung anong masasabi mo patungkol sa video ito. Salamat. This will cause nightmares for diplomats but I think inevitably there will be a diplomatic solution. Okay, maraming salamat po, Atty. Harry Roque.